About two years ago, we were fishing for yellows and we landed a really, really big cod on a tiny little soft plastic. And then we thought maybe it was a coincidence, but now later we hooked one even bigger. So we sort of thought maybe soft plastics are the way to go in impoundments that see a lot of pressure. They work better in the clearer waters because they don't give off much of a vibration because as you'll know, your hard bodies and your spinnerbaits give off a lot of vibration. Um, they see a lot of pressure. You will still catch fish in clear water on the spinnerbaits and the hard bodies and they will always work. But we thought they've seen a lot of pressure, we might try the soft plastics and we were really surprised at our results. Yeah, so we gave the soft plastics a crack and they really, really did work. And I think it was because, especially blaring, sees a lot of pressure. And those blades on the spinnerbaits give off a, a lot of flash. And we found it was spooking fish. So the plastics, it didn't take long for us to get fish. I don't know if you can see it. I'll hold this up, actually. Um, they were two of the fish we landed out of blaring uh, a week apart. The first trip we did with the soft plastics, we had no idea if it was going to work. And the top fish was the one a mate of mine, Jack, got. Um, casting in the middle of July, so you barely, rarely ever see fish caught on soft plastics that time of year, um, or soft plastics at all. So that was one um, starting point. And then the next week, Chris, Chris landed that metery, and I got one that was a bit short of that on a soft plastic. So they have been successful. And the technique we used was pretty much just casting against the bank, the same you would use with spinnerbait, and just slow rolled it out. Some of the steeper banks we'd hop it off, um, but m m most of the time we slow rolled it because the dam at the time was really weedy, so we had to keep the lure off the bottom because whenever you weed, you weren't going to catch fish. So the simple technique was to just roll it straight back to the feet. Um, and most of the time they were caught down and against the bottom, but we even had some of the fish following right up because we'd fished blaring previous years. And it could be a weather change or a different weather pattern, but we'd fished it previous years with spinnerbaits and we never had quite the success we had um, this winter. So that was the testing we did with them and we believe they're going to work really well as the cod season opens up and we're going to be using soft plastics a lot more than we usually would have. Um, so with soft plastic size, it doesn't hurt to go really, really big. So this one here, um, we haven't used yet, but I'm sure it'll catch fish. I'm going to give it a crack. It's a 200 mil lure. So you think about that in reference to the size hard bodies you get in the shelf. Like 150 mil, you won't see many anglers with too many lures bigger than that, but it doesn't hurt to go big. So this one's 200. Um, the soft plastics in length, don't have a bigger, as big a profile as your hard bodies will, so it doesn't hurt to go a bit bigger. The paddle tails work excellent. They seem to be the most natural. Because we're using them for the fish that feed visually, we want to match the hatch, and that was really important. That's why we had the natural color in the squidgy, um, because the fish were eating it off visual presentation. So you hear um, a lot of anglers put scent on their lures and all this funny stuff, but the cod doesn't come up and sniff the lure before it eats it. it it's going to hit it because it wants it. So especially in that dam, they see it. Um, as summer comes into action, the water does dirty up a lot. So we will see if they will work. I'm confident they will um, because the paddle tails still have a bit of an action. The dams are still clear enough, but there's always a place for spinnerbaits as well. We'll still use them to cast um, when the water's a bit dirtier. So that's just something to think about. If the water's getting dirty and you're trying soft plastics, they don't work, you can still result back to the older lures. And then again, you're same with your hard body, especially trolling in the dark. We won't go past doing that technique this year. That'll be one of our first trips we do at the dam. We'll probably troll in the night because it's such a successful technique. We're still coming up with a way to work out how it's going to rig well, but the standard way with a jig head, run through the front and then you sting her off the back, um, that'll work a treat and that's how we caught all the fish so far. But I'm coming up with a design to even use, where are they? These G-stingers in the back. So that way you can pin them in the back and it gives it more action. Um, another way that I'm working with one of the local lure makers is to put a treble underneath. I've got to work out how it's going to connect but put a treble underneath that sits right in against the belly because the trouble we had was when the fish hit the lure head on, they weren't connecting and most of the time a cod will hit the lure head on um, unless you're getting towards the later section of the retrieve when they're coming up and following it up. So the treble, in the it'll go underneath in the back here and one point will go in and the other two points will sit either side. Now, soft plastic should float so when it sinks it should sit on its nose so it shouldn't snag and it won't snag because we've tested that and that treble sitting back this way will get those fish that hit the lure head on. So that's another way we'll rig it. But all those different techniques, um, I don't know if anyone knows, uh, myself and a few other mates um, have been building a social fishing website 
Um, so what we've done is we've filmed over eight hours worth of videos, tutorials that you can watch. So if we made them into DVDs, there'd be massive DVDs, but we wanted to bring it all out there for everyone to watch. And we're going to show you how to rig these. So if you're not sure how to rig a lure on a stinger, um, soft plastic with a stinger or even a spinnerbait with a stinger, we're going to show you how to do that. Um, we'll show you these other techniques we come up to rig them. We've even got videos on how to work the soft plastics because obviously I can't teach you everything now. You need to be on the water, but that might be a starting point to see a video. gives you a bit more of an idea out in the water how they will work. But yeah, it's just something that wasn't used all that much and I couldn't even believe that they would hit soft plastics. But see, this year we're even going to try them in the river. The problem is in the river they're not very snag resistant lure. So I went down to Eildon recently and while fishing for golden perch we snagged up quite a lot because it is full of timber, a lot, a lot of timber. So soft plastics in heavy timber probably aren't the best option. I'd probably go back to a spinnerbait. So it just depends on the location. But blaring and burring jack are going to work really well. Actually, sorry, we'll talk about the weights of the soft plastics. So we've been running, I've been running with between one ounce and three quarter ounce. I've been going in grams. So three quarter ounce is about roughly 20 grams. And the fish we were catching, were caught, well the ones I caught on the, pre, on the rigged soft plastics were on about 20 grams. These ones are a bit lighter, but they don't need the extra weight because the plastic's smaller, because plastic will float. So when you get these bigger ones, this one here I'd definitely rig on a one ounce. And there's a couple of other plastics that we've been using which are a bit shorter, more this size. You go with about a 20 gram, which is three quarter ounce. Um, but it's all trial and error to match your weights to your soft plastic. But you want it to sink nice and quick because the fish isn't going to get caught in that first section. You want to cover as much water as you can. So what you want to do is you want to get the lure down to the depth as quick as possible and then fish it back along the bottom. But while it's sinking, it'll sink fairly quick. But once you're winding it back, because of the way you're retrieving it, it won't sink as fast. So even though you look at a lure and you think, fire it, that sunk quick, when it's actually coming back, when you're actually fishing it, it will be a bit slower. So you want to make sure you have the weight to get it down. So hook size with the jig head, um, we've been using, like, we had 6 O's on the 200 mil plastics we had. These ones here, it have to be a 6 O, they're nice and big, but you want something big. So anywhere between a 5 O, 6 O, 7 O, don't be afraid to go big because you want that gap in the top of the hook. I don't know if you can see, but there's quite a big gap between the hook and the top of the plastic. Um, whereas this one's not quite as much. And the reason we use the big plastics is to catch big cod. Um, and the bigger the gap here, the more chance you're gonna have a landing them. I had one rigged up that was quite small in a gap, like the gap between the top of the plastic and the hook wasn't much. And I found it was quite hard to stick those big fish. Little fish will stick easy, but the bigger fish you want a, a bigger gap between the top of the plastic and the point of the hook so that you can actually stick the fish. Now let's talk about the outfit. Um, pretty much the same as you'd use, you're not gonna buy a new outfit for plastic, same as you'd use for casting spinnerbaits, um, trolling big hard bodies. You don't want a light rod, nothing you'd use in the river for, for flicking spinnerbaits. You wanna go up it, up size a little bit. Um, usually if you do a lot of fishing, dam fishing, river fishing, rivers you'd have a lighter rod to cast. It depends on personal preference, but me, see I like to have a really light rod to flick lures, whereas Chris will use the same rod for both the dam and the river because he likes a bit more a bit more strength through the tip in his rod, but that's all personal preference. You want something nice and heavy. Um, it's hard to put a name on the weight of the rod you want. See, it's eight to 12 kilo, but different brands differ greatly. Like sometimes you'll use some that are totally rated different and the rating they give to the rod is totally different to a different brand. But you want something nice and heavy. Usually I just go off the feel of the tip and how it looks through the butt. As you can see here, it's quite a stiff butt on it. And if you pull the tip down for me, so as Chris puts pressure on the tip, that's quite a stiff rod. See, it's slipping out of my hand and it really has, it's bent over a little bit, but not a whole heap. If you get a lighter rod, it'll bend a lot quicker. Like using a little trout rod, it, it, it bends and loads up a lot quicker. And that's something you use for in the river. See, that bends a lot quicker. But yeah, you want something nice and stiff and, it, and it's all because of that cast. When you want to cast these big lures, I was using 20 gram lure, it is really quite heavy. And when you load it up, if you've got a light rod, it's not going to go anywhere, you're going to end up breaking a rod. Um, so it's a fair bit of hard work casting the plastics. It's like casting the spinnerbaits. So we use a two ounce spinnerbait and it's really heavy. So you want to have that heavy rod to get it in against the bank. And then after that, you still want the heavy rod to land a big fish, but you can still land a big fish on a light rod. But the big heavy rod does help. Um, same rod you use for trolling, casting spinnerbaits, casting plastics. So. It's definitely a technique you should try. Um, we've had success and if you follow us on the social fishing team, you would have seen a lot of the fish we caught and you'll see a lot more posts and videos and fish that we will put up and show you how the soft plastics have been going this season. Um, 
Back to the braid, sorry, I missed the braid. The braid, it's personal preference again that you'd use. Um, if you don't do a whole heap of fishing, like see even I, I stick to 30 pound for everything I use because I'll use it in the river, I'll use it in the dam. 30 pounds ample. Um, a lot of the big cod fishermen who fish for dam fish constantly and have a lot of money to spend a lot of money on gear will go maybe 40 pound, 50 pound braid, something heavy to land those big fish. And it doesn't hurt to go heavy because some of those fish are really big, especially if you get them tight against structure, you need to get them out. But I've landed a lot of big fish in 30 pounds ample. Now the lead is really important. Um, that's something we found was probably a big barrier between catching fish and not in bland because it's so clear. If you think about it, the cod and the golden swim in the same water and we go down, I noticed I talked to a couple of blokes up at Blaring recently, we were using eight pound and we'd landed over eight fish and the other fellas were fishing next to us and they had 12 pound and wouldn't, couldn't even catch a fish. Now I don't know if it was just the leader, but I was pretty certain that was the difference. Um, they were getting follows, so the fish were interested in the lure but they weren't, just, they weren't quite taking it. Um, so you think about that, the cod live in the same water and really sometimes cod are smarter so you think even cod will be able to see heavy leader but the problem is you can't go down to eight pound for cod because you just won't catch any. So if we went down to eight pound I'm probably sure we'd hook about three times as many fish but you just can't do it. Um, the reason we, the way we sort of get around that is you've got to use a fluorocarbon leader. Um, I don't know if anyone, if you know the difference between a monofilament and a fluorocarbon. Um, we use mono in dirty water and in rivers and I'll try and use mono as much as I can because it's stronger and it's more abrasion resistant and it ties a lot better. The knots tie up much better on a monofilament. So if I'm trolling in the dark up at the dam, I'll go monofilament in about a 50 pound. In the river, I'll be a 40 pound monofilament. But when we come to this dam stuff, especially in blaring, burring jack's not too bad. You can probably get away with a heavier leader, especially once it dirties up this time of year. This time of year, now it's really dirty. Last year it was quite clear, so we went fluorocarbon. Um, but especially blaring, you want to use at the most a 40 pound fluoro, but even that was too heavy I noticed, so I was dropping back to a 30 pound fluorocarbon, and we landed, um, both of those big fish were on 30 pound fluoro, and a couple other ones we got, and I'm not, I might even try, I'm thinking next year as we get around to winter, back in blaring when it's clear again, if they're being picky I might even drop to 25 pound, because blaring hasn't got much structure, so it won't hurt to hook a big fish on a little bit lighter, and if you get that chance to land a fish because of that drop in leader, well, it's better off having that than not getting the hit at all. So, it doesn't hurt to go light, but see, bone and jack will go up if the water's dirty. you just got to evaluate it on the day. We'll probably start with a 40 pound fluoro. We'll still go fluorocarbon if it's a little bit clear because monofilament gives a milky colour. Fluorocarbon disappears. It's transparent in water. In saying that, I still reckon the fish can seem because those golden perch in the dam can be really picky when you go too heavy. And that's on fluorocarbon as well. Um, so, it won't hurt to drop your leader down. So we'll probably start with 40 pound, might go down to 30 pound. Um, as the time goes on, you just gotta evaluate when you're up there. Um, so that covers the plastics, the outfit we use. Um, if anyone has any questions regarding anything, even if it's anything to do with fish, it doesn't have to be soft plastics, just come up and ask. Um, like I said, we've built a website that has over eight hours of video tutorials, so it's 450 minutes plus, and they're all in depth. We sit down, we talk about the gear, talk about the colours, we get out in the water and show you the techniques for casting and there's a lot of information there, it's taken us nearly two years to film it um, between myself, Chris, Jack and the good cameraman here, actually I have to thank him, I might do it now, thanks Heap Stump for the work you've done, you're a legend. Um, so uh, we have a Facebook page and the website launches on 10th of December, so check it out and um, hopefully you'll learn something from it. The Facebook page is up, it's been up for nearly oh, a year because we caught a couple of big fish last year and that's when we launched it. Um, it's called Social Fishing. So there's a poster there, a poster here, come up and talk to me. It's up and the website's exactly the same and it'll be up on the 10th of December. So the Facebook page, we post nearly three to four times a week. It's actually quite hard to keep it up but we come up with videos and content and it's just a taster for what the website will have. So there's some videos on there that go for two or three minutes but the website, we've got videos that go for half an hour and talking about in depth tips. So the Facebook page is called Social Fishing. Um, you scroll through there, have a look at a few things and that's what the website will be called launched on the 10th of December.